Hi everyone, in this video we'll see how to backtest your portfolio on Python. So given a vector of weights in a particular vector or stock, uh, stock name, you'll see how to backtest your portfolio. So, okay, first of all, as usual, we rename our Jupyter Notebook file, for instance, portfolio backtest. And, uh, okay, we can start import some packages and libraries so first we import numpy we call it mp then we need uh, the yahoo finance package so y finance to which i just dedicated a couple video so if you're not familiar with this package i suggest you to watch them then from date time we import both date time and time delta which we'll use later on and then finally we import plotting.express as tx to to just to plot our our stock charts so here we put some input parameters because we'll we'll create a function that um, that will print and plot our portfolio value over time so the stock name, which will be a vector, for instance, we just use some some famous some of the most famous stock names. So for instance, Apple, Meta. Then we have Microsoft, and uh, finally the SP five hundred, so Standard and Poor, which is the label is SPY. Okay, then we choose an end date and in particular we choose today because we want to backtest our portfolio up to today. Then to choose the, the starting date, we select for instance three years and then we compute the start date, let's say from the end date. So from today, we go back in time three years. So to do that, we just have end date minus and here we use our time delta function we've just imported and we say days equal to n years number of years uh, times 365 as the, the days per year and uh, finally we just need a vector of weight if uh, for instance we want the the very same weight for each stock then I choose uh, one quarter for its stock, so uh, dot 25. Okay, now we can implement our own function. So we define it as, uh, for instance, portfolio uh, value evolution, because this is what the function will do. And the, the inputs are the stock names. Then we have the weights. The, the start date and the end date, so four inputs. Okay, now we can start writing that. So first of all, we need to check that the sum of the weights must be one. So uh, M, uh, from NumPy, we have MP, uh, sorry, these brackets are not needed. If MP.sum of weights is equal, is not equal to one, what we do, we just print sum of weights must be one, of course. Okay, otherwise we go on. Okay, here we can uh, early return, but it's not needed. So stock data. First of all, we need to to download this data and we we do this from the Yahoo Finance package so yf dot download and the inputs are the tickers which are our stock names then we have the start date so start equal to start date which is another input of our function portfolio value evolution and then the end which is our end date Okay, and in this way, we'll just download all the, the stock values 
over the, the period start date and date. So in our case, uh, three years. Okay, now we create um, a vector, an array, which is stock, we call it stock rises. And we, because the, the stock data you, you download uh, the open price, the close price, the adjust close price, and and various um, quantities. But what we need is uh, the adjust the close price, of course. So then the name of the field is uh, add close, and so stock price is just an array with all the adjust the close price. Okay, then we create another uh, array vector which we call this weight stock prices, which is simply stock prices scalar product to the weight. So, if for instance we have uh, as our case Apple 25% of our portfolio, we just have the stock price. Uh, Let's uh, let's pretend today's value of Apple is 100. Then we'll have 100 times 25%, which is 25. And so for every stock in our portfolio. Then now we can uh, update our own uh, data frame by adding a new column. So stock prices dot lock of every row and we call the new the new column portfolio value and here we just put the weighted stock prices the, the sum of the weighted stock prices so weighted stock prices dot sum of one which is the sum over the rows so 25 percent percent times the apple stock value of date x plus 25 percent times the meta price of the same date x and so on then we pass the the date x plus one and again we have 25 percent times the apple stock price then 25 percent and so on we sum over the rows and uh, we put this value on a new column called portfolio value ptf value then we just to have a better visualization of that we can plot our values so in the same uh, chart we will have the both the stock uh, values the stock evolution values and then also the portfolio value evolution because in as i said before uh, as we've seen in stock price also now contains the portfolio value column and then we have fig dot show to show the figure and uh, we also return the stock price. So if you want to handle this data again, you can use this. Okay, it seems we've done no mistakes apparently. And uh, okay, now we can test our function. So full portfolio, we create a new new value. Sorry, a new variable. We call it full stock uh, portfolio prices, and we use our own function so portfolio value evolution and the inputs are our stock names then we have the weights then we have the start date and finally the end date and now let's see if this works so we have we have an is a mistake so stock price does not exist i think it's because it's the plural so we i missed an s and uh, okay let's see if now it works okay we have downloaded all the data and as you see you can see the the chart for each stock in our portfolio so of course uh, you can do what you want on this uh, on this label so if you want to focus just on a shorter time window you can do this then you double click on the on the chart and you go back on a full screen and for instance, if you want to focus just on the portfolio value, you double click on the legend on portfolio value, and you see in the in the chart just the line related to the portfolio value over time. And as you can see, the first uh, the starting value of three years ago was 178, and the two days value would be 
with these weight and these stock uh, stock prices would be 20, uh, 228 so we see the an increase of the value then you double click again and you see uh, the old chart so finally just to to complete our uh, okay uh, if you want you can also since we have the, our function uh, returns the stock prices you you can visualize it so if you want to do for instance you can print to the, the last uh, five values it just you, you can look at that so from today up to five years ago because they just print the, the last five elements of the table of the data frame so as i said before you can see the final portfolio value of today okay now just to complete we can uh, see the total return of our portfolio over the three years back testing window so total return would be just very simple formula so the full portfolio prices of the the column portfolio value of minus one so the last element the today value in this case today value over the full portfolio prices also of portfolio value this case of zero so the first value in in our example of so three years ago then minus one because we just want the the return uh, we have uh, this will give us uh, a value which must be considered in percentage so we can print it the percentage format for instance total portfolio return column and then we have uh, in the format f of uh, total return column dot two and because we want two decimal digits and two percent this is uh, the, the usual uh, way to print this and then that's it let's see if it works and you see that over these the time window we would have a portfolio return of 26.94 percent so if uh, let's say we if we would have invested uh, one uh, 100 dollars for instance three years ago with this portfolio with these weights so 25 percent of each stock we would now have 126.94 uh, dollars to which we just had to we, we we should include the fees but this is another issue which maybe we see later on and uh, and that's it so if you if if, if you want for instance add uh, a new stock uh, you just you can add for instance the the tesla stock then we we, we must uh, update our weight because otherwise the the value wouldn't be the sum wouldn't be one so again if we consider an equal weighted portfolio so one over five to each so 20 percent each stock then we rerun again our um, our function and um, okay here i have to run and uh, as you see we have all this data and let's see if we have an increase in the value uh, let's see okay in this case the value would be the return would be much higher so in this case i would have almost a 50 percent return which it's quite good given that we have uh, we just to consider some some random numbers and yeah and that's it so i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you found this useful if uh, if yes uh, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial